and welcome to my channel or if you've been here before welcome back it's time for my regular monthly what i read video so i'm filming this mid-march and it's the what i read in february and at first i thought that i had read less than usual because i looked at my little pile of books and i thought i don't seem to have got through much and then i realized i'd read a couple of my kindle and there was a couple of audio books and i'm counting those there's sometimes been a disagreement between um readers about whether audiobooks count as reading, but I'm counting them because the purpose of this is not to show off how many pages I've got through to you guys. The purpose is to share stuff that I've enjoyed. And if I've enjoyed it through my ears rather than through my eyes, it still counts. So um, what I haven't got is any reading order this month. I can't remember what order I read them in, but I'm going to start with um, an audiobook that I don't have in front of me. So this is one that I listen to on YouTube. You may not be aware that there are lots of full length audiobooks available for you to listen to on YouTube. Literally, if you type in your chosen author and the words audiobook, you'll be surprised what comes up. And one of the things I've been listening to this month, or rather last month, was Agatha Christie, The Mysterious Mr. Quinn. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was interesting that it made you wonder who Mr. Quinn was. So without giving away any spoilers, um, your narrator, whose name temporarily escapes me, um, meets the mysterious Mr. Quinn at various points in his life, in various different scenarios, and things that Mr. Quinn says or leads him to think about enable him to solve various crimes and mysteries. It seems to me, the more you read, that the, more, the, the firm chance is that Mr. Quinn doesn't really exist because he is he's very much a, a like the mysterious Mr. Quinn, as the title says, he disappears, he never, nobody's ever heard of him before. Um, it's not that other people can't see him, but it's this strange kind of idea that he might actually be the narrator's subconscious, that he might be leading the narrator to find these answers that are within himself because he's in there too. That might just be my take on it. If you've read these books or listened to these books, then do let me know what you think. Let me know if you think that... I've got a point. Anyway, it's a collection of short stories, all featuring Mr. Quinn and, and, and various different mysteries. So it's very easy to listen to if you're working and you want something on in the background or whatever. It's a very easy thing to put on and listen to a little bit of. Also on audio this month, I have listened to, this was in the car, Neil Gaiman's Neverwhere. Now, this was recommended by Andrea Raystock. And... Uh, Funnily enough, she recommended it on the comments of one of my other What I've Read videos. And I thought, oh, I'll look out for that. And then two days later, I spotted this in a charity shop and I thought, well, that was meant to be. When I started to play it, I realised it's not an audio book as such. It is a full cast radio dramatisation. Now, I've included it. I'm not 100% not sure whether that counts for an audio book, but I think, I think it does. I'm, I'm including it. Regardless of whether it counts or not, I really recommend it. really enjoyed it. It um, features David Harewood. Sophie Okonedo, Benedict Cumberbatch, Christopher Lee, Anthony Head and David Schofield. One thing that struck me all the way along was how much David Harewood, who is um, who's this guy here, he's a black actor here, how much he sounds like Benedict Cumberbatch, who we see here. Throughout the audio, I kept thinking, that's Benedict Cumberbatch playing that part. And when I kept checking, I was like, no, that's David Harewood. His voice is so similar. I don't know if they come from the same area, whether they've got the same local accent whether they simply went to the same drama school and and were taught to speak a certain way i don't know but but yeah he was mistakable throughout as as benedict cumberbatch so um, it, it confused me anyway that's that's by the by the story of neverwhere is a young man in modern day london who slips through a crack into into the underworld and discovers that there's a whole other world under the streets of London in you know not, not just in the sewers but underneath and in the subways and everywhere and has um an adventure and I, I don't want to I don't want to ruin it for you but it was a very good dramatization and um a couple of twists that I didn't expect so I would definitely recommend that Neil Gaiman worked closely with Terry Pratchett on a number of books and projects and um, was a very, very close friend of Sir Terry Pratchett. And now Sir Terry Pratchett is obviously my hero. Because, um, because who, yeah, if you haven't read any Terry Pratchett and you don't think he's for you, then you are me before I read Terry Pratchett. And I strongly urge you to become me after I read Terry Pratchett. <laughs> anyway, Neil Gaiman, any, any, anyone who Sir Terry approved of and worked with is good in my book. And this was really, really good and definitely worth reading. On my Kindle this month, I read two books. I read 
Lily Pickle, the Lily Pickle Eleven by Gwen Grant. Um, I can't pull it up to show you, so I don't know why I, why I picked my Kindle up. But there's my Kindle anyway. You will, may you may remember a couple of months back I read Private Keep Out by Gwen Grant, um, and this was triggered by a conversation that I'd had with Cheryl Pound Girl. She was looking for this particular book. She described it, and I went, "Oh, that sounds like," and it triggered this memory in me, and I thought I'd like to read that again. So I read it, and then I thought I'd have a potter around Amazon and see what else Gwen Grant had available on Kindle. And the answer is not much, but that was the Lily Picker Eleven. And I think I remember reading that as a kid as well. The Lily Pickle Eleven is actually the second book about Lily Pickle and her friends. And the first one doesn't seem to be available on Kindle, which was mildly annoying. But I vaguely remember reading them as a kid anyway. Um, entertaining. I seem to recall... Basically, Lily is living with her nan at this point because um, her mum her mum and dad split up when she was little and now her dad's come home and she doesn't like him. She calls him Mr Pickle throughout the book. She refuses to call him dad. Um, and the book deals with um, how she gets on at school with her friends and her... and her PE or games teacher who has decided to set up a football team to bring them together. And it's just, you know, just an entertaining book and a nice little wander back to my childhood. The other book I read on my Kindle this month was a Noel Stretfield. Now again you might think oh another book from her childhood but actually this was one that I've never read before. Now I, I thought I had read everything Noel Stretfield read when I was a girl, so everything she wrote while I was a girl, so ballet shoes, um, they they renamed them all so they named them circus shoes theater shoes and so but that's not what they were called originally and then apple bow and and all of the all of the noel stretfield classics that i remember reading and i thought i'd read them all as a kid i didn't realize that she also wrote more adult stories not not of an adult theme not something that would be unsuitable for children but certainly written from a more adult perspective and this one in particular was parsonage nine so it tells the story of um, a vicar's family. They have nine children, and it and you and you watch them grow up, and you see how their lives mature and what happens to them. And it's set around the turn of the century and over the first twenty years of of the ninth of the twentieth century. So obviously, it, it you know we we go through the war and so on, the First World War with them. It was, it's, Noel Stretfield's books are always beautifully written and then there's never anything massively scandalous. They're all very much of their time, but I really enjoyed it. And it was nice for me to realise that there were other books available by an author that, who I've already always enjoyed and that I would now be able to find more. So there are other books by Noel Stretfield that I didn't know existed. So I'm looking forward to reading more of those. Um, there is one passage in this book that made me cry loud gasping tears and made Natalie call out mum what's wrong and I said oh this has happened in my book and it was very sudden and very upsetting but perhaps more upsetting to me because of who I am and how I react to things than it necessarily would be to anyone else I'm not going to give you any spoilers in paper form this month I have read two more of my Arthur Ransoms I'm now down to my last one I am currently reading Northern I have now read all of these over the last few months so um this month i read peter duck and i also read we didn't mean to go to sea and they're two quite different adventures despite the fact that they feature the same cast of characters so in we didn't mean to go to sea the it focuses on the four walker children nancy and peggy aren't in this one this so we, we've just got the swallows we've got no amazons and as the title implies, they accidentally go to sea. So they make a promise there. They are um, t offered a chance to go out on a boat trip with a local person. And they they're because their father is due home on leave from the Navy any day, their mother promises that makes them promise that they won't go too far. And one of the things they promise is they won't go beyond a certain boundary point and therefore out into open sea. And something happens. And as the title says, we didn't mean to go to sea, but unfortunately we do go to sea. It deals interestingly with the sense of honour that was prevalent around that era, around the time of the Second World War, around the, the first half of the 20th century, where you didn't break a promise, you didn't tell a lie, 
being honourable was more important than almost anything else and, and how they deal with the fact that they've inadvertently broken their promise and so on and so forth. So that's that's an interesting book to read and, and very much, again, of its time. And then this one, still in the same series, still in the Swallows and, Swallows and Amazon series, still by Arthur Ransom, completely different style of book. In this one, they go off proper treasure hunting, proper treasure hunting. They're off with Uncle Jim, better known as Captain Flint, and we've got all of the swallows and Amazons in this one. And again, it's it's much much thicker, as you can see. I don't know which order these were written in. I feel like this. Um, I feel like this was an earlier one. Although I'm again, I'm I'm really not sure. But look at the difference in in page numbers. That I mean, the we didn't mean to go to see us three hundred and thirty pages. Peter Duck is four hundred and seventy five. So it's almost. Almost twice, twice, almost twice the length. I can't do maths, but yeah, um, very, very different book and much more adventurous. And it puzzled me because in one of the other books, they mentioned something which is make believe, and one of the characters says to the other, "Oh, but you know that's all Peter Duck," as if to imply that's all make believe. And it made me wonder: is this book supposed to be just somebody's imagination? Obviously. The actual book is somebody's imagination. But, you know, is the adventure that takes place in the, in the book supposed to have really happened to these characters? Or is it the idea that one of them has imagined it and, and written that story? Because why is it referred to in a later story as, oh, all Peter Duck? The other two books that I have read this month are both from the British Library Crime Classics series. Um, so I've read the 1230 from Croydon by Freeman Wills Croft and Resorting to Murder, which we'll talk about first. This is a collection of short stories. Um, these were edited by Martin Edwards, and so these are not all by the same author. We've got Arthur Conan Doyle, as you know, who obviously wrote Sherlock Holmes, E.W. Horning, Alma Bennett, M. MacDonald Bodkin, G.K. Chesterton, Basil Thompson, R. Austin Freeman, H.C. Bailey, Anthony Barclay, Leo Bruce, Helen Simpson, Phyllis Bentley, Gerald Findler and Michael Gilbert. Now, none of those, apart from Conan Doyle and G.K. Chesterton, are particularly well-known names to me. And I read quite a lot of crime fiction, so you'd think I'd notice them. But perhaps if, if they did write more short stories than full-length novels, perhaps that's why I've not come across them before. So they are collected by Martin Edwards and there is an introduction by him as well. And specifically, this particular collection focuses on short story mysteries that have happened while somebody was on holiday which is why they're called resorting to murder in a holiday resort or whatever so the back says holidays offers offer us the luxury of getting away from it all so in a different way do detective stories this collection of vintage mysteries combines both those pleasures from a golf course at the english seaside to a pension in paris and from a swiss mountain resort to the cliffs of normandy this new selection shows the enjoyable and un un unexpected ways in which crime writers have used summer holidays as a theme these 14 stories range widely across the golden age of British crime fiction. Stellar names from the past are well represented, Arthur Conan Doyle and G.K. Chesterton, for example, for instance, with classic stories that have won acclaim over the decades. So there we go. Um, I really enjoyed it and it was nice that it was short stories because I was able to stop at the end of a chapter without that drive to continue reading at 2am when you think I really should be going to sleep but I want to know what happens next. It's nice with a short a book of short stories to be able to go that's it that's that's tonight's reading done I should go to sleep now. This one really kept me reading. It's an unusual crime story in that it is written from the point of view of the murderer and we see him plot his crime and carry it out and then we wait to see if he will be discovered and and how and so on and so forth so it's almost a Columbo style crime those of you who've watched the detective series, series Columbo with Peter Falk may know what I mean they are they are the kind of crime stories where you watch the crime being committed and then you watch the, the detective unravel it and that's what this was so we know who's going to die straight away and he pops his clogs in the first chapter uh, but by the second chapter, we are seeing why he's popped his clogs and who's killed him and why. Um, so there's no who done it. We know who done it. It's more of a will they get him? And of course, they will, won't they? Won't they? They'll get him, surely. But how will they get him? You see, we follow him committing his crime. We can't see where he slipped up. It all seems to us that he's done the perfect job. But somebody's going to get him somehow, aren't they? So there we go. 
that is this month's reading. Um, no poetry this month. I didn't read any poetry this month, so I'm a bit slack on that. I must um, must find some poetry to read because I try and do a little bit of selection of everything. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, please do tune in again and watch some of my other content if you've if you have enjoyed it, I, I watch. I make very varied contents: shopping hauls, live streams, eBay videos, cooking. You name it, it's in here. This is a regular smorgasbord of everything you can possibly imagine. So, there's a thumbs up button that you can hit if you've enjoyed this. Please do add a comment if you've read any of the books that I mentioned and enjoyed them, or if you if I've made you want to read them. If there's anything else you think I would enjoy, pop that in the comments below as well. And um, obviously, if you do want to see more content. Use the subscribe button so that when I upload, you'll get to see it first. Thanks for watching my channel and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye bye.